Welcome back to 1776 or bust. So on the table, you see my very, very first 1911. In this case, it is a Rock Island Armory 1911. Now, before I get into a really quick tabletop about the handgun itself, I do want to say this uh, before I go into this so that nobody has any kind of, uh, you know, anger issues afterwards. But this gun was sent to me by Rock Island Armory to kind of just do a quick test and evaluation on. They also, nicely enough, arms Corps, which is their i guess their parent company um sent me out ammunition to shoot with it so i mean that's pretty awesome especially from an independent uh, gun channel like mine who doesn't necessarily have a lot of supporters uh, in regards to markets but when you have a gun company that's willing to send a gun out like this and just to test it and evaluate it and to really just be honest about it i i guys i gotta say that's pretty awesome so thank you uh, rock island armory and thank you arms corps for sending the ammo with that being said what is this tabletop really going to be about well first off guys i, I do want to say i've never owned a 1911 prior to this one here and i don't own it this is just a lender uh, with that being said I never really thought about ever really buying a 1911. Some people may think that's blasphemy. I personally just don't really like 1911s. Um, you know, I don't really find them to be uh, suitable for what I use my handguns for, and that is obviously for you know self-defense, also for carrying concealed, um, and also with training and all that other stuff. It's just for me an eight-round capacity. Now, some people may say, "But dude, you live in New York; you only have a ten-round capacity." And you're right, that's true. But for eight rounds of 45 uh, with a two, uh, almost a, almost a two and a half pound handgun, I, I don't really see the advantage of it. But I'm always open to trying different things with handguns. And in this case, when I contacted them, they agreed to send it to me so I could test and evaluate it. I was very happy. Now, the one you see on the table here or in my hand, this is actually their. Uh, their TAC Ultra model, and this is the 45 ACP. They have two of them in 45 and in nine millimeter. I actually wanted to shoot a 45, so I asked them if they could send this one, and they agreed, so here it is. Now, in regards to it, the, the 1911 is kind of an interesting handgun. It's been around a long time, obviously, and uh, with that being said, there are some factors involved with this that make the gun, in my opinion, sort of antiquated. You know, the takedown is a bit of a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, it's not overbearing. Um, it's not that difficult, but it's definitely different from, let's say, modern firearms, um, especially striker-fired firearms. With that being said, one of the major advantages that this gun has above a lot of others is the trigger. Now, one of the things that I did notice about this trigger on this particular 1911, and again, this is my first one. I, I have no experience with any of the high-end ones, um, but I would tell you that the trigger on this is actually pretty damn good. Uh, with that being said, let's just clear the gun. There's the magazine. And we'll see that it is all clear and safe. But uh, the trigger on this, there's your take-up, guys. There's like nothing there. And uh, there it drops. And, um, you know, I do know you're not supposed to drop the hammer, but I'm not going to be doing this for multiple times. But you saw that really, really light reset. And again, we'll try it one more time so you can see. That's the reset. So it is actually a very, very good trigger. Um, very nice trigger. Uh, that's the first thing that I, I noticed about the handgun. Some of the features on the handgun, it does come with G10 grips, so that's fantastic. So these are actually very nice grips. It's almost a combination of different texturing on there. Um, I actually like this. It's a little bit rougher in the front, a little bit smoother to the rear, but it doesn't really hurt the hand when you're grabbing it, but it does give you that bite on your fingers and also the bite where you need it when you're wrapping your hand around. Also, you'll notice that it does have two safeties, actually one safety, but it is fully ambidextrous. Um, not ambidextrous, but ambidextrous. And what you'll notice is that um, you can actually use it. Let me, uh, you can use it if you're a right-handed shooter or left-handed shooter. And that's actually pretty cool. Uh, from what I've been reading, this is not necessarily a standard feature on a lot of um, 1911s. So for a cheaper 1911 to actually have that, I think it is pretty nice. I would tell you that my only real issue with the safety on both sides is that when I do get a good grip on the handgun, First off, the safety is very, very easy to use. It's super tactile. Um, I, I really like it. It's got a nice positive feel to it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but one of the things I did notice was that when I'm holding the gun and I'm kind of uh, squeezing it to death, uh, you'll notice that that safety hits my, uh, I guess you can say for lack of a better term, hand fat. 
uh, and it's a little uncomfortable. So I do have to lower the grip just slightly and then I don't hit it. Um, but I would tell you that on the, the uh, strong hand side with my thumb, uh, the safety has a very, very nice lever on it. So it is actually very nice to actually be able to, let's say you pull and withdraw your from your holster, drop the safety down, your thumb has a very nice resting shelf right there. Um, so I do like that factor involved with it. Uh, maybe they could cut it down a little bit on this side or maybe just have the option of either replacing this with a, a single safety as opposed to a double but that's just something you know i noticed when i first handled the gun with that being said you'll also notice it does have adjustable rear sight here which is kind of a cool feature and they are steel sights and it also has a nice red fi fiber optic pipe in the front so you do get pretty good visibility right out of the box and that's kind of nice and again for what i've been reading these are not necessarily standard features on um 1911s in the high end and to have it on what you would consider quote unquote potentially a low-end 1911 I think that's a pretty cool feature so from that standpoint for me do I like the handgun sure haven't shot it yet I'm gonna be shooting it hopefully tomorrow and uh, I'm gonna come back and do a review on what my afterthoughts were about the 1911 platform but as it stands right now guys this is actually a pretty nice looking 1911 it weighs about two pounds and I don't know maybe like a quarter ounce or something like that it's about two and a half pounds weight so it is kind of a, a heavy handgun but that's expected especially from 1911 you have a parkerized slide and a parkerized finish throughout the entire handgun. So again, you know it's going to be durable at best. It's not the fanciest looking finish. It is kind of dull, but you know what? Who really cares? I mean, it's going to have a durable finish with that parkerized uh, slide and, and frame, uh, plus the addition of the VZ grips. One of the other things that I did notice is that if I was to purchase a handgun like this, what I would probably wind up doing is I would actually probably wind up getting thinner grips. I just feel that these are a little bit too chunky. Um, not to take anything away from the handgun because it is nice to have that feature right out of the box. But for me, I'd probably thin them out a little bit, you know, but for you, it might be a little bit different. You know, it just depends. Other than that, guys, it's fantastic. It does have an adjustable overreach for the, for the trigger. So I think that's pretty cool as well. So you can actually adjust it. And apparently this trigger weighs anywhere from four to six pounds on the initial pulls. So uh, just really quick, I'm going to test what this is on my gauge. So give me one second. Oh, it would help if I actually hit the safety too. Duh. So let's try it one more time. So you can see right now it's set at 4 pounds, 13.7 ounces. So that's the first trigger pull. It does feel fairly light, but actually fairly good. Um, and it is a very, very, very um, nice trigger. I mean, it's probably one of the nicest triggers I've felt in a while. And you can see there, like I said, no take up, guys. So that's it. Um, other than that, fantastic features. Um, looking forward to shooting it, and uh, I'll probably be back at some other point making a video on that. So I can't wait to shoot this thing, but right now it looks pretty good, and I'm pretty excited. You'll also notice that the magazines comes with two steel magazines, and you'll notice if I can find that on the magazine. Let's see if I can turn that around. I don't know if you can see that, but you'll notice that it does say Italy. So obviously we know these are Mechgar mags, which is kind of sweet. Again, one of the things I do like about the magazines and the handgun is look how positive it ejects these mags. That's pretty nice, guys. And I'm holding this gun totally sideways, so it shoots it right out. So that's actually a nice feature, too. Um, you know, it makes it easy to get that. Also, you'll see you have the magwell at the bottom here. Um, so you do have that as well. Had this been removed or not added, you probably would see a little bit more of the magazine. And you'll notice at the bottom. But now it's nicely covered up. And it actually makes the gun look a little bit nicer. Again, something that I've been reading, these are not necessarily standard features on the high-end 1911s. And again, what you would consider a low-end 1911, supposedly, you're getting a lot of pretty cool features. Now, how does it shoot? We're going to find out. I can't wait to test it out. But this is kind of just the overall impression that I had when I first received it. Now, just to kind of compare it in size-wise, interestingly enough, um, again, one of my favorite guns of all time, the P01. If you notice, they're almost identical in size, which is kind of nice. You know, so the 1911 that I have here is definitely a carryable gun, but you're definitely going to have to, you know, deal with the weight. You know, the P01, you're looking at basically almost a full pound heavier than that. So that's a pretty big difference. Other than that, the uh, 1911 is pretty nice, guys. Not going to lie. Uh, doesn't mean I'm going to buy, you know, 10 more of these or buy any of them. Eh, maybe not. Uh, am I a huge fan of 1911s? No, but again, that may change once I shoot it. So tell me what you think. Tell me if you think this Rock Island is going to be performing really well. Tell me if you have any experiences with Rock Island Armory. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So I hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe out there. And as always, freedom is never free.